gonna do a, a talk about the Bible and what will come out from the Holy Spirit. So let's start with prayer. Father God, I pray that you bless the people listening, that they might be blessed financially, spiritually, physically, and in every other way that you said you will bless us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Father God, I pray that we might spend time in your word, time in prayer, time close to you, and help the people listening to be blessed in every situation they have. Some people are hurting. Father God, that you give them the solution out of these troubles. Heal them. Give them financial blessings. May they be happy, because Sister White says that this is your will to make your children happy. And I pray, Father God, that you might understand your word today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, let's start with Psalms 47, 1 and 2. Psalms 47, 1 and 2. The Bible tells us, <coughs> Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. So the Bible says that if you are a Christian and you're living in this world, going in the subway, walking in the streets, going to work, and you have no worries about people around you. You do not realize the wickedness that is all around you. The way people talk, the way people behave, the way people have total unconsciousness about truth and error, about right and wrong, about what should be followed, the love of God and the lawlessness, then you are not a Christian. If you do not realize the state of the world today, the utter wickedness, so much so that even presidents can act like criminals, then you are totally blind spiritually. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. We can link this verse with Revelation, which says, The Lord, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, which is as the name of the time, fights with truth and not error, so Jesus can only work with truth. But this world, since about 10 years ago, has been fully been set into gangsterism, into evil, into selfishness, into pride, which is a lifestyle. And this lifestyle cannot be connected with God in any manner. There is no connection between right and wrong, there is no connection between good and evil. And when you walk in the street, you walk in the subway, the pride of people is the suffer of pride. They can ne never enter into heaven this way. It is, it is impossible. We saw Desire Bridges. Desire Bridges says, the one that is low and gentle and kind and humble, Jesus Christ. But how can someone can say, I'm a Christian and be so full of pride and gangsterism and selfishness and hate? of others and being full of only me, 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 and then you have Jesus Christ here, gentle, humble, lowly, kind, is total opposites. And it's, it blows the mind to see the people, not see the pride and the sin of the worst kind. People can say, no, but pride, you cannot, you don't go to jail for pride. No, never, the police never going to come to your house and say you need to be arrested because you've been proud. Yes, you've been proud for two weeks. We'll put you in jail for two weeks and you'll understand what it is to be proud. No, no one gets arrested for that. So because people make the morality because of the laws of the country. They say, oh, my country doesn't, 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 doesn't uh, punish pride. My country does not punish lying. My country does not punish selfishness. Thus, it is not a sin. I do not care about these things. It just says, if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter heaven. Never! 
a, 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 a foolish can, can the Christian be to think that pride is not a sin? When, when, when the Bible is full of these two kinds, to, these two words are, are often repeated. The proud and the wicked. The proud and the wicked. The proud and the wicked never go to heaven. We have this in Malachi 4. All the proud and all who do wickedly will be stubble. The day that cometh shall burn them up, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Who? The proud and who? The wicked. The proud and the wicked. The proud and the wicked. The proud and the wicked shall never enter heaven. And the people say, but, oh, but how can you measure pride? How can you measure pride? You don't know who's proud. Do you think this guy is proud? What do you say? How do you measure the proud? Pride is any, any glory you take for yourself instead of giving to God. If you don't give the glory to God in everything you do, everything you are, everything you, 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 you accomplish in your life, and if you give the glory to yourself, you are proud. This is, this is it. Everything you are, everything you do, everything you accomplish in your life, all glory comes to God. The Bible says clearly, without me, you cannot do anything. Without God, you cannot do anything. Unless the branch is connected to the vine, you have no life in yourself. Unless the branch is connected to the trunk, to the vine, you have no life in you. Unless you, God did not give you the breath of life and life and the power and the opportunities and people to meet and, and, and the intelligence to do it, then you don't do anything in your life, only through God. Which means that if you take, if you take uh, credit for anything that God has given you, you make yourself a God. You are an idolatry. Idolater. And the Bible says, no idolater shall, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Proverbs 24, 1. Be not thou envious against evil men. Neither desire to be with them. The Bible says, maybe in a country where people are so evil that how can you be around them? The Bible says, do not be envious to be around them. Do not be around evil people. I mean, you have to, to mix yourself with the world. You have to come and to evangelize. But, but to, uh, you have to, to, to spend a lot of time with, with evil people. A lot of time. If you're a Christian, you have to spend a lot of time with evil people to give the gospel to them. What the Bible says, do not envy us to be around them. Do not envy to be into the lying party. Into, okay, there's going to be a party. This is the, the proud party today. The proud party. And the lying party. And the selfish party. And me party. And, and, and the, and the deceit, deceit, deceitfulness party. No. Do not be envious to be around them. Luke 14, 6 and 9. He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. The question is, the man goes to the vineyard, he looks around at the trees. Look to the tree. Uh, you're the keeper of the vineyard? How come none of the trees have any fruit in it? Is it possible that you're the keeper of the vineyard and you have not kept the vineyard in such a way to put fruit in it? Or is it possible? And he found none on it. Then said he unto the keep the shop of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on the fig tree and I find none. Cut it down. Why can't I receive the ground? Look, look, you're the pastor of the church. Look at this church. All the trees in the church, they have no fruit in it. You're the keeper of the vineyard. And why are these not bearing fruit? So what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to cut them down. We're going to cut the tree. This tree is going to be listening to the word of God week after week after week after week after week. This tree has been going to church Year after year after year after year after year after year, this tree has been knowing the truth, spiritual prophecy, the health message, the sanctuary message, 
25, 20 uh, hundred days and still he's not bearing any fruit. He's not bringing souls to Christ. He's not having a Christian character. Let's cut it out! But he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. Peter shall dig about it and dung it. Just do you know what? Let's wait one more year, one more year. All these Christians here, you want to cut them out. But imagine maybe next year they'll be bringing bring fruit. They'll realize that the Christian has to bear the fruit of Jesus Christ, to become as Jesus, to receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Yes, these trees here, they think they, they have their own righteousness. They have no leaf, no fruit, nothing. They have their own righteousness, which is nakedness. These trees have been blessed with the best, the best ground, the best mulch, the best, the best uh, uh, sandstone, the best, the best food, the best minerals, and yet they are not bearing fruits because maybe they do not realize that they have to bring the fruit to others to bear more fruit. So maybe next year that they, they, they realize it. Maybe next year. This year they didn't realize it. The year before, neither. Neither the year before. It's been, it's been three years. They're not bearing any fruit. Maybe this year, this, this, this tree will bear fruit. Just bear with them. And, but, and if it bear fruit, and if not, then after that, that shall cut them down. If, if after the one year, these fruits, these trees are not bearing fruit, God himself, Jesus Christ, will Cut the Christian out. Cut the Christian out. Cut, cut it out. We have the same story in Nebuchadnezzar. He was in his kingdom. Is not this great Babylon. Is not this great Babylon that I have built. By my own might. By my own power. And wisdom. Look at the statue of Marduk. 60 feet high. Full of gold. Me, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the world, the king of this universe, is not this great, magnificent Babylon I have built myself. Angel, Angel comes and says, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, yes, this is me. You built this city yourself? Oh, yeah, 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 I built the city myself. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, you became the king of Babylon by your own power? Yes, okay, yes. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, this, this city, the riches you have, the gold and the silver and the magnificence you have, do, you did it yourself, right? Yes, okay. From today, for seven years, seven years for today, you will eat grass and you will understand the ruler of the heavens makes us men to go up and he makes them to go down. Do you understand? Yes, seven years is eating grass. And we read that in the book of Daniel, where it says that after 12 months, after one year, the same parable as the Bible, one year cut them out, after 12 months, these words came to pass in Nebuchadnezzar. So for 12 months, Nebuchadnezzar was still king of the, of the kingdom. But because he did not bear fruits, because he did not repent, because he did not accept the message, then the word of the angel came to him and he became as a beast eating the grass lowly and the people that were worshipping him for a long time they said, oh look at this guy he's just eating grass and, and, and pooing in the, in, the, in, the, in the garden here Could it be your case? Are you bearing any fruit for Christ? Are you like these barren fig trees? Who, uh, even the leaves are not there, the fruits are not there, and yet you are fed with the best mulch, the best minerals, the best food from the ground. And you should be preparing the best fruits in the world, and yet there is no leaves, no fruits, nothing. Are you this kind of tree? The question is, what could you do to change this situation? The other question is, do you know that after 12 months, God, God can cut you out like Nebuchadnezzar did, like these fig trees 
cut out because no fruit is bearing. No evangelism, no preaching the gospel, no telling others about the truth. Look uh, chapter 13, and we continue verse 23 to 30. Then said one of him, Lord, are these are there but few that be saved? And he said to them. So someone comes to Jesus Christ and says, uh, Jesus, we want to know uh, something very important. Everyone is asking his, itself this question. All over the city, all over the world. And this, we, we, we really want to know this. Are there only a few people who will make it to heaven? Or will there be a lot of people from this world going to heaven? We want to know that. Jesus, can you tell us the answer to this question? We want to know that this world has 7 billion people, 8 billion people. From the 8 billion people today, are they going to be a lot of people going to heaven? Or from the 8 billion today, are they going to be a few people going to heaven? What is it? Just answered. Strive to enter at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter and shall not be able. Many shall seek to enter and shall not be able. When the master of the house is risen up and has shut out the door and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he shall answer and say to you, yes, who's knocking? You knocking? Yes. Oh, yes. Who is that? Yes, uh, I'm a Christian. I used to go to the Adventist church down the street. Okay. Yes. Uh, I know your name is in the books of this church. I know your name in the books. Is it Jesus Christ? Yes, this is me. But who are you? Yes, you're seven Adventist. Okay. You're seven Adventist and uh, and uh, but uh, do you think the name as seven Adventist will save you? Well, that's what the pastor told me. The pastor told me that just be seven Adventist, just go to church, just pray, read the Bible, and you'll be in heaven. Okay, the, the pastor told you that, but did you check for by yourself in the Bible? No, not really. Well, I don't know you. What do you mean I don't know you? I gave tithes all my life, I preached the gospel all my life, and you don't know me. I don't know you. Go away from me, you who work iniquity. Go away from me, you who work iniquity. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drank in thy presence. And thou have taught in the streets. But you don't know me, Jesus Christ. When you were in Jerusalem, we were here and, and we were listening to you to the preaching of the gospel in the streets. I was, I was at the camp meeting, don't you remember, I went to camp meeting, I gave my, um, the tight envelope, every year tight envelope, every week tight envelope, tight envelope, tight envelope, and still you don't know me? So you're meaning to say that all my life I gave the tithes to you and you don't know me? You're meaning to say that as a Baptist or Methodist or Pentecostal or, or Jehovah Witness, I went to church and evangelized, I preached the gospel, and still I'm going to hell, to hell because I didn't receive the stranger's message. Yes! There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves just out! No, it cannot be. We, Adventists, just out of the kingdom. Baptists, Methodists, Pentecostals, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, they will not accept the Jesus message, went to, 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 to the church of the life. They prayed hours and hours and hours, like hundreds of hours during their life. They went to evangelize hundreds of hours of their lives. They read the Bible hundreds of hours in their lives. They went to church hundreds of times in their lives. And still they end up in hell. No! Why would it be? Because of unbelief. He says in, uh, we can look it up in uh, Jude. And we'll come back to look for it in Jude. Right before the book of Revelation. 
And where is it? Yes, verse 5, Jude 1, 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. Oh, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. The Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. Afterwards, destroy them that believe them not. What do you mean? What does it mean? It means God saved the people of Egypt. He makes miracles. He makes the, the, the plagues, the ten last plagues, the most, the most wonders of the earth. And he brings them out there to what? To kill the unbelievers in the desert. Oh no, are you crazy? You mean to say that people, God can save people to come to church and to destroy those who don't believe in Ciso White? Yes! I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. Oh, that the Lord, having been saved, I say people out of the land of Egypt, after war destroyed them that believed not. Look for him. Verse 29. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. They shall come where? From the east, Indians. From the east, Muslims. From the east, Buddhists. From the east, Shintoists from Japan. Come sit with Abraham and Jacob and in the kingdom of God. And you yourselves, Christians, Adventists of the Church, the true Church of God in the end times, just out. Why? Because they did the works of God. They followed their conscience. They love their neighbors. This is the main thing. Love your neighbor. Love God, you love your neighbor. If you do that, you do the whole law. If you be kind to others, if you're humble, if you, if you forgive your, your enemies, if you help the poor, if you, if you can to people, if you teach them for free things, then you go to heaven. This is the main thing. Love God, love your neighbor. And behold, they are last, we shall be first. And they are first, we shall be last. They are last, they are harmless. They are looked upon as uh, uh, worthless. They are looked upon as outcasts of society. And they will be the kings of heaven. Those who don't fit in with society. Those who don't fit in with the crowd that's parting. But the crowd is parting say, hey, don't come into a crowd. We just, we are in a group here. Do you understand? Our group is closed here and you get out of the group. And we are like parting here in the group. No, this outcast will be the first in Canada. Many of the first of the presidents. Yes, my name is President Sululu. I'm a big president with the big uh, of this country and everything. And you'll be found the last in the kingdom of heaven. Will you be the first or will you be the last in the kingdom of heaven? Are you putting the principle in action that if you want to be the first, you'll be the servant of all? Or are you bossing other people around? When you're in a group, do you try to exclude other people or do you love everyone the same? You make your own group, you make your own sex, then you're not going to heaven. Because the Bible says those who do sex, those who do groups, those who do cliques, they don't go to heaven. Because if you want to go to heaven, you have to include everyone, include the, the outcasts, include everybody. And you don't make any my little group here, your little group. Everybody is welcome, you should be welcome in your group. Okay, we end with uh, Sister White. And these are uh, momentous, solemn uh, quotes of the Sea Spirit Prophecy. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 8, page 247 250. In the balances of the sanctuary, the Seventh day Adventist Church is to be weighted. In the what? Balances. So, judgment of the sanctuary in heaven. The what? Seventh day Adventist Church, the true Church of God since 1844, is the only Seventh day Church, is the only Church in the world, true to God. The Seventh day Adventist Church as the true true truth of God, then is, is to be weighted in the balances. She will be judged by the privileges and advantages she has had. had. So the S message, she's so right. The sanctuary message and all the truths we have wonderful truths then will be judged 
according to the blessings you have had. Have you been taken, have you been taken advantage of these blessings? Or have you made them to be of non effect? I saw our instructor pointing to the garments of the so called righteousness. So, Ellen G. White, she's here, and the angel comes. My instructor comes. And the, uh, the angel is pointing, Ellen G. White is here. The angel is pointing to the Adventist people, some of them. And she is pointing to the so called righteousness. No, but he has a suit and tie. He's going to church with the Bible in the hand. Welcome. Your yeah, brother John, how are you doing? Happy Sabbath. Brother James, hi, how are you doing? Yes, very nice to see you. It's so nice to see you. Happy Sabbath. Ah, uh, yes, my grandma is of so called righteousness. Yes, me, Sister Jamie. Hi, this is so nice to see you. Yes, Sister Jamie. Oh, yes. Do you like my, my garments? Yes, where do you buy them? I bought them in Sears. What's the brand? The brand is so called righteousness. I saw her instructor pointing to the garments of the so called righteousness, stripping them off. He laid bare the defilement beneath. The angel says, Look, there's a seven advantage here. Oh, yes, he has a nice suit, nice tie. He's a very nice guy. Every Sabbath he comes, he's very nice. So everyone, no, look at him. The angel comes and he strips down the garments. Strips down the garments of the so called righteousness. What do we see under this? We see. The, def the defilement business. Oh, it's ugly. Oh, look at the lying. Oh, look at the selfishness. Oh, look at the pride. Oh, it's ugly. Oh, look at the lying here. Oh, it's so ugly. Oh, and we see the defilement business. Then he said unto me, Can you not see how they have pretentiously covered up the defilement and rottenness of character? Ooh. The says, can, can you not see that the outward appearance is so-called righteousness, but they have pretentiously covered up the rottenness of character? <coughs> Selfishness, lying, pride, arrogance, lying, stealing, and caring for others, hateful, murdering, killing, stealing, hateful, don't caring about God, uh, appearance of, of, of righteousness, just going to church because it's a, it's a show. This is the rottenness of character, the, the, the preacher frame rottenness inside. Can you not see or oh, they have pretentiously covered up the defilement of rottenness of character? How oh, is the faithful city become a harlot? Testimonies, volume 8, page 247 to 50. So, Sister White is not saying that the Seventh Adventist is Babylon. I don't believe in that. I believe that how oh, is the faithful city become a harlot? It's like the Jewish church was in Babylon. Why? Because the Jewish church had the truth of the doctrine of the teachings. This is the truth of God. What makes Baptist Methodists be Babylon? Because they have errors, false doctrines, paganism in their midst. The Seventh Church, the truth, the teachings of Sister White, this is truth will never be Babylon because it is the truth and it's forever the truth. Yet the people can be in apostasy, which is the case now. The people can be in apostasy, which is the case today. So unless they're waking up, the judgments will come on the church. Let's look at uh, the Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4. Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, page 199 and 200. So now, Ellen G. White is quoting the Shri message. And so now the angel, flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that... that uh, that dwell on the earth to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, singing with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of waters. And I saw another angel saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, like, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And I saw another angel saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast or his image, or receive his mark on his forehead or is in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God poured out with that mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the, and the smoke of their torment rises up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast or, or, or his image, or whosoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And then Sister Beth says, 
the angel represented in prophecy as delivering this message, symbolizes a class of faithful men. So the angel's message symbolizes what? Faithful Adventists who will go out, go out, go out and preach a message. So the change message is not really three angels giving the message to the others. He says, the angels presented in prophecy symbolizes a class of faithful men who obedience to the promptings of God's spirit and the teaching of his word proclaimed the warning to the inhabitants of the earth. This message was not committed to the religious leaders of the people. So this message what was not given to the leaders of the Adventist church? This is what he's saying here. The three of the were not given to the leaders of the church. Not all of them. I'm sure that many of them are faithful. They have failed to preserve their connection with God and have refused the light from heaven. Therefore, they were not of the number described by the Apostle Paul. So many of the leaders of the church they did what? They failed to preserve their connection with God and they refused the light from heaven. The messages of Sister White, the, the, the earth message, was refused. So they were not of the people that Paul says, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light and not another day. You are not of the night nor of darkness. So the watchmen upon the walls of Zion should be the first to catch the tidings of the Savior's coming. Meaning the, the leaders of the church, the pastors of the church should be the first to say, Oh, Jesus is coming, let's warn the people. The prophecies are being fulfilled, let's warn the people. They should be the first to catch the tidings of the Savior's advance. The first to leave the voice in proclaiming near. The first to warn the people to prepare for His coming. But they were at ease, dreaming of peace and safety. While the people were asleep in their sins. They were, and the leaders of the church, they were, what? they were dreaming of peace and safety. Okay, let's imagine, you're in the church, and you're at the board meeting. And you have the elders here, and you have the pastor, and you have the deacons, the deaconess, and they're here. Okay, brothers and sisters, what are we going to are we gonna discuss today? Uh, Elder John, what do you want to discuss today? Uh, I'm dreaming of peace. A lot of peace. Oh, okay, brother uh, Elder John. Uh, Elder James, uh, what are you going to dreaming? Uh, what, are, what do you want to discuss today? Uh, I'm dreaming about safety. Oh, safety, it's a, James, Elder James, it's a good topic to discuss, safety. So we have peace and safety. And you, Brother Michael, what do you want to, to discuss today? Well, me, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm dreaming of peace and safety, both of them together. Oh, that's good, Michael. Peace and safety, and we have peace here and we have safety. So peace and safety is the message. So all of us today, for this board meeting, let's just dream right now. We dream of peace. Oh peace and uh, on this side they said both of us let's all dream of a safety safety oh safety safety yes while well, the people were asleep in their sins dreaming of peace and safety well look at the white last events all it says a lot of things about but what's coming even though some people say this book was put together and everything but the quotes are from sister white and it says that the the alarming events are coming at terrible we need to wake up Jesus saw his church like the barren fig tree covered with pretentious leaves, yet destitute of precious fruit. So Jesus says what? Jesus Christ sees his church, the seven entity church, as the barren fig tree. There's a tree here. We talk about the tree today. And it's barren. There's no leaves. There's no fruit. Nothing. Barren fig tree. And, and, and he, has, we, he, has the, he has the leaves, but it's pretentious leaves. It looks closed. It looks with a garment on, but there's no garment. It's naked. There was a boastful observance of forms of religion, like the Jews. Well, the spirit of true humility, penitence, and faith, which alone could render the service acceptable to God, was lacking. Instead of the graces of the spirit, there were manifested pride, formalism, vainglory, selfishness, oppression. In the Adventist church, selfishness in the Adventist church. You kidding? Yes. Pride, yes, pastors. Or the church I used to go to. The pastor is like a gangster. What's so yeah, yeah, let's leave it in, 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 in the Adventist church.
pride, formalism, vainglory. Oh, look at my dress. Oh, sister, sister Rebecca, your dress is so beautiful. Yes, and we're gonna spend the whole Sabbath talking about your dress because I love even Saks Fifth Avenue. Sears, oh yes, I love your dress and your earrings are so nice. Yes, I never saw you wearing earrings before church. This is so beautiful. It's not about the earrings too much, the importance is about spending your time talking about foolishness. A backsliding church. Close their eyes to the signs of the times. A backsliding church, Adventist church, close the eyes of with the signs of the times. Sister White is saying that in the spirit of prophecy volume 4. God did not forsake them or suffer his faithfulness to fail, but they departed from him and separated themselves from his love, as they refused to comply with the conditions. His promises were not fulfilled to them. As they refused to comply with the conditions, his promises were not fulfilled to them. We can see in that the 25 and 20 prophecy, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28. The promises, if you do good, I will bless you. And you come in and you come in out. Uh, 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 everything you do will be blessed. I uh, will command the blessing to be upon your storehouse, upon your works, upon everything. Blessings. But if you do not, I'll bring the curses to you. And uh, because we don't comply with the, with the conditions, which, which are the conditions? To do many things, to do this and that. No, to accept the righteousness of Jesus Christ is the condition. We said, no, we don't want this righteousness. I have enough righteousness in myself. I go to church, I keep the Sabbath, I pay my tithe. I have plenty of righteousness, plenty of righteousness. No, but this is not the righteousness God needs. We need the, the, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He says we need, didn't comply with the conditions. We need to comply with the conditions. He did not, so his promises were not fulfilled to them. Spirit of Prophecy, Energy White, Volume 4, page 189 and 200. In fact, it's the 1844 edition of the Great Controversy, page 202. So, are you a barren, barren fig tree also? How much fruit are you bearing? Much? Little? None? So now is the time. What will keep you now for bearing the fruit? What's bearing the fruit? How much fruit do we need? The bearing the fruit is accepting the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Number two is spending time with your, with your maker. Prayer, reading the Bible, and you receive the righteousness of God by faith. And then, all the truth we know, that's the message, everything, we have to give it to others. If others don't want it, it's okay, it's not your problem. You have given the message, they do whatever they want with it, it is not your issue. Once you're given the message, you've done the job, it's finished. Then it's up to the Holy Spirit, it's up to the angels, it's up to God to work with their hearts. But you have done your part. Your part, your job is to spread the message, give it to them. Your job is not to make them to become Adventists. No, your job is to spread the, to spread the truth to them. Why would not, are you doing this? Why are you not doing this? What will keep you from doing this right now? And bearing the fruits of Jesus Christ. What will keep you now from accepting the righteousness of God instead of yours? Right now. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that you bless the people listening. May we as a church accept the truth of the righteousness of God, of Jesus Christ. May we as a church give the children's message in its fullness to all the world. May the people accept it, Father God, and, and, and may millions be, may be brought into your kingdom forever and ever. May you be happy, God, with many of your children saved, converted, and with you in the, in the glories of heaven. Father God, I pray that you bless me here in France. That you help those listening to bless, to pray for me also, for the people here to receive the message. May you give me more means, more ways of, of passing income, Father God, so I can have uh, more blessings coming in, so I can also spend more time with you, Father God. And may you bring helpers also, helpers to help me here, Father God, and keep me from the evil, keep me from the proud. And I pray the, to, to be with those listening, to people who are sick, may they go to Life Regenerator. Some people are sick, may they go to Dr. Glidden. Dr. Glidden, Life Regenerator, Dr. Valak also, Dr. Andrew Saul, Dr. Abraham Offer. There's plenty of them in the internet that give the true uh, health and I pray for the God that you help them in, in the finances too. If some are troubling finances, they, that you help them with the investment to have more co uh, income coming in and give them the, show them the way they can have more income coming in and, um, and to bless them spiritually also in the name of Jesus. Amen.